lagers, pilsners, India pale ales, double IPAs, doppelbox, Belgian goldens. That's right. It's all here on another round of Brews Day Tuesday. Here's Grez and Big Nate. Hop and top since Brews Day Tuesday brought to you by the Southern Restaurant and Six Pack Store. In downtown Blacksburg, it is yours truly dressed along with Big Nate. We are sipping on some beers from Richmond, or I, I keep wanting to say nations, but I guess it's our our state's capital. And this th- this round is going to be from Vassen Brewing Company down there in Scott's Edition, which there's a bunch of breweries down in Scott's Edition, the Vale being one of them. And again, I think the Vale does have a new location, but Vassen... Still fairly new on the block. I don't know. It doesn't say on my label, at least when they came around. But I do know that this label, it it tells me that this beer was bottled on February 13th. So when I got it, it was pretty fresh. And now it's still not not too shabby, especially considering that it is the Imperial Walrus, which is a stout aged in bourbon barrels. Just what I'm looking for. It's one of those 500 milliliter bottles coming in at 13.6. Oh, big boy. That is a big boy. Imperial Walrus sounds like, uh, for whatever reason, like if you were to join a cult, like the person in charge of that church would be called something like the Imperial Walrus. My mind goes to the Beatles. Imperial Walrus. (laughs) Like, I, 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 I'm all about it, man. I'm very intrigued. Is that a frosted bottle? I just noticed that too. I was like, damn, is this like a black bottle or something? It is. It is frosted. Okay. At first I thought it was just super cold, but then yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, it is, this is just a frosted bottle, which is pretty badass. That's an elegant I, touch. I do like that. Get a little distracted there. So from Vassin, I've got the double berry sour. Raspberry, red currant, which uh, is one of my favorites that you can't really get a lot here stateside. So that's pretty impressive. And hibiscus, 7.6 ABV, which is crazy for a sour. That's uh would be the sour equivalent to a big boy. But something they've listed on here that I've not seen listed before, and I had to do a little uh, little research in the break to figure it out if I was correct. The pH, you remember... Learning about pH, like acids water balance versus bases, and uh, vinegar has a pH of three. Coffee has a pH of four. This is is wa- water is is water the baseline? Water is seven. It's so it, yeah, the middle. Yeah, that's right. And then it goes bases and acid. Okay, yeah. So zero to six is acidity. Okay, sorry. What were they again? So so, so vinegar is three. Your your average household of vinegar. Coffee is four. This okay. is sitting somewhere between coffee and vinegar at 3.4. Okay. So, I've never seen pH listed before on a sour, but it is kind of intriguing. It makes sense that they would list yeah. that they would list. I've ne- I don't think I've ever noticed that either. So it gets more so- is it does it go down to zero? Yeah. So zero would be like I'm, straight pure acid, battery acid or something. I, I, I would assume know. so. Like yeah, it's stomach be. acid, something like that. Hmm. No, stomach acid was two. I did see that on my uh so it would have to be like a pure, almost synthesized. Wow, hydro. So that's got to be pretty, pretty potent in the sour category, I would assume. Mm-hmm. Or is it not? I don't know. I don't have a basic comparison of what other sours usually rank on the pH scale. That that is interesting. No, we should start putting that on the notes. It would be good. So Vassin, have have you ever been to Scott's Edition and done I'm the brew habit? You need to do that, man. So there's, as we mentioned, there's. Uh, you know, the Vale Vassin. Uh, I know that I was getting a joint theory. No, a joint not, theory. No, 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 no. Sorry, Ardent. I get them mixed up for whatever reason. They have a lot of similar letters. Ardent is down there as well. I guess the new Vale. Um, there's a lot of, and it's all walking distance. Like it's all just this one area that if you, I can't even imagine what they charge. To rent. And there's also some nice, like, you know, apartment buildings and stuff. I can't even imagine what you're having to pay to rent there. It seems like it's one of those spots that is blown up and 
it would be the place to live in my opinion if if you were to move to richmond i i have noticed a trend lately um particularly in my case it's with with going to Asheville is that they'll like all just go whole hog in like one area like there there's that whole section i i think they call it the brewery trail in Asheville and like they give you a map and it's not even worth having a map because you're standing on the front porch of one and looking at, you can just it's like this looks so much farther on the map i could it's right there why yeah. do i need a map i don't I'll know figure if, it out i don't know if it's quite like that um but it's definitely you would need a map you would need to know okay i need to come up here walk a couple blocks make a right but it's still very condensed in its quality quality breweries you know it's not it's that's not important just, yeah it's not just hopping one to another no pun intended and and you know just because there's an abundance of them but that being said there's more than just breweries there is there is the spot that we went to after Vassen, i do believe in fact i know for sure been drinking all day as you can imagine hitting all these all these breweries and i was feeling pretty damn good by the time i left Vassen, and we decided to go to this place called tang and biscuit what do you think tang and biscuit when you think of that Tang's name a what fish it's like one of the most common fishes in the ocean what else is it uh the juice that astronauts drink yeah that's the tang we're talking so at tang and I, you biscuit know, i don't know which i would have been like happier with because they both seem like definitely definitely the the latter tang you know the drink is better and i don't even know the fish but and i frankly now that i'm thinking about it, i'm not too sure what the biscuit is i don't know if they have a sandwich or something but crackers they have a drink there that comes in the shape of like a light bulb and it's a tang, I don't know, like vodka kind of a drink or something. I'm not too sure. Uh, it's what astronauts drink. Me, me and Brad uh, were hanging back, looking at the shuffleboard, watching some shuffleboard when the ladies went up and got two of those. I can't remember what they're called. I got the light bulb. It's like a light bulb with a straw sticking out of it, basically, and it's orange, and um, it's pretty cool. It's not. It's not too bad, but this place. Is huge. I mean, it's like a warehouse. They got bowling. They got shuffleboard. Um, they got in the back area. I can't even. I mean, I can't even remember what all the games they have. I feel like I've played foosball there. We were playing beer pong, is what we were doing. They had like two or three beer pong tables, so we hopped on that and played a little there. We played the jumbo um, Connect Four. They had that. They just got a bunch of games and stuff, and it's a bar they had. But here's the thing. It must have been a Saturday night. They had a DJ, and we went there. And I've been there before, but it was never, I guess, a Saturday night. But it was hopping. It was hopping, for sure. And it was one of those hopping nights where we walked in, and I immediately felt pretty old. <laughs> I felt old, man. Like, I guess, I don't know if it's the spot for the younger crowd to go to on a Saturday night. I mean, maybe the games are the appeal. If These kids they, don't if, even know what Tang is. Or if maybe you can't drink, you can still go to here and play games and have fun. But man, like, it, I felt, felt, felt a little old there. Did you get carded? Probably not. They were probably, I, I guarantee you, there were bounces there, but they were like, ah, oh, y'all are good. Go ahead. We don't need his ID. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. I always, and I don't know. Like my my, I guess he's my stepdad now. He's he he gets he doesn't get carded, but my mom will get carded, and he gets all bent out of shape about it. And I can never like, to me, it's an inconvenience. I'd rather not be carded. Oh, absolutely. Like it's a pain in my ass. I would much rather not be carded. When I do, I it's still the point where I'm like, oh oh okay yeah sure. But if you make the mistake where you somehow don't have your ID on you or something, then that can be. There's really bad. There's that or like I've got this weird like lingering social anxiety is that like they're going to like really look at my ID and I have long hair in my driver's license picture. It was taken in high school. So this would be I mean, it would be a weird scenario that this man who's clearly in his 30s entering our bar with a fake ID. But um, 
I always have this anxiety because they'll do that thing where like if they don't believe you, they'll they'll follow up with uh what's your birthday or mm -hmm. or what what's, what's your, your zodiac zodiac sign? That can be the one that trips oh, people up yeah. sometimes. But the thing is, is I don't think the address on my driver's license is right. Like I'm pretty sure it's like an old it, address. It's an old address, or is it just not even? The time my license expired was in the midst of the pandemic, and the DMV had basically said, "Yeah, don't come here. Like, we'll just mail you a replacement." Oh, so you still have your old address on there? Yeah. Oh, that could be a problem. And, and like, I've got a little card that says like the address change and everything, and no, they don't like want to reissue. You're not going to carry that. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna, God, if I even know where it's at. So it always like. That's uh, well, you can easily give my address. Like, that's well, not what it says here. Well, there's a lot of that. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of ad people's IDs that because you don't instantly do it. I know you're supposed to do it within a month or something, but people don't do that. I mean, that's an old address, you know. Yeah, I just the uh, the fact that the DMV was so laissez faire about it for a while, though, I feel like it's kind of shady. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, and getting back to ID and like some, sometimes I can get it if you, if you're at an establishment where it's like, we hundred percent check IDs and then you get like a grandma and you ask to see their ID, they might think it's funny or like, be like, Oh yeah. yeah. But, and not to, uh, not to bring it. I mean, it, it ended up being fine, but, and it wasn't this past year, but the year before my mom and my grandma, who at the time, I guess, was probably, well, she's 95 now. So 94-year-old grandma went to Fork and Cork, 100% ID check. And grandma doesn't walk around with her purse, yeah. usually, and stuff. And they didn't think to bring her ID. And they asked and were like, we need to see everyone's ID. And you look at my 93-year-old grandma, you're like, Re you you really you need you need to see it ended up working out but have you ever seen the little rascals cuz <laughs> for all i know you're three young ladies in a trench coat yeah well either way uh ever since then and this past year they're like we need to bring your id and make sure that you can go uh you know get in there no problem she just so. spent some wine that's all i earned it grandma loves wine that's all Oh man, wine time every day. Looking forward to it. Can't get enough. I, I do enjoy. I can only wine. I can only hope to be to be that spry and eager to drink day drink at that age. That'd be fa fantastic. Wait, was this this year's fork and cork? The ID thing was last year's, okay. and this year they were made sure to bring the ID. So that it wasn't an issue. So she she was out at Fork and Court. Yes, yeah. yes, they were there. I yeah. think they 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 probably went early. So I know you were there later. I don't know if you if if your paths may have oh, crossed they, or not. They really like are committed then because it was not a pretty day. No, but I think I think they kind of figured maybe the weather. Um, would be to their benefit and that would help with the lines because sometimes the lines can get long. I don't know. I've been to Fort Cork in a while, but I know the lines got a bit outrageous at some point and you basically needed to buy a bottle of wine and sip on it while you're waiting in line. And then you get up there to your tasting and it's gone. So I think that might've played a factor. I think they, I think they were ready to go right, right when they could so that they could take advantage of trying to beat the lines That's and the smart. crowd That's planning ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've had the ponchos and they were ready to go. So, yeah, I, I, I similarly align with you. I think uh, if I'm 94, I want to be that eager and ready to rock. I mean, at that age, day drinking. I mean, I love day drinking now. I can I look imagine forward to at it. that point. I thought, sleep good tonight. Yeah. Well, I mean, at that at 94, you're ready. For, you're going to be ready to call it a day by five o'clock anyway. So right. you need to, if you're going to drink, you got to be drinking around that time. Got my wine, got my dinner. I'm going to bed. Speaking of drinking, that's what we're doing here. Brews Day Tuesday. This is definitely a nice uh, frosted black bottle from Vassin Brewing Company out there in Richmond, the Imperial Walrus. It is going down quite well. I will have you know, I know we do like the half pour. I didn't do the half pour. I did a little... Because I didn't want to drink all my half during this segment. 
So don't pour all the what's left in this bottle. I, I get a little bit more coming my way. But man, mainly because I, I need it. This is delicious. A stout brewed and bourbon barrels. We've been over this before. When it comes to stouts, I need it to be sweetened or I need it to be barrel aged. And of course, this falls into the latter, man. 13.6%. It's got the notes you're looking for. Just a big hearty beer. I mean, it doesn't even, the taste, at that point, when 13.6, does the taste even matter? You're just like, oh, this is going down. It's very drinkable. Uh, do you remember Four loco? Taste absolutely matters. I was more of a juice guy. Oh, okay. You were one of those. Yeah. But no, this this went down real smooth, real easy. I'll, I mean, I'll do it. I'll give it a five. I love the label too and the name. And I just also really enjoy the brewery. Bass and they have really cool artwork when you come in. Uh, the people were very kind. In fact, like I said, we've been day drinking all day and they were kind enough because my phone got down to no joke, literally 1% battery. And I was still trying to check in beers. Got to untap. Like, I was like, man, do, do you guys happen to have a USB C charger back there? Can you hook me up? So I was able to keep, keep the drinking going. Thanks to the, the fine folks at Vassam. That so, is a support team. If I've ever heard of one. Yeah. And the beer is good too. So definitely go check them out. <laughs> So everything about this, you concur. Yeah. I was yeah, going to say everything about the this berry. beer is, is delightful. I don't know. Uh, if you're watching on the video, you can see it. It's, it's this beautiful, like pink plum color. And uh, it's fairly hazy. You can't really see through it, but it, as far as sours go, I, I will say I can't give this a five just because of the one that, that your buddy Josh brought in it was the best sour I'd ever had. Oh, so, so now if I gave that a five. I have to like be fair here. So this this is. I mean, I'll I'll go ahead and not bury the lead. This is a four seven five. It is damn delicious. I even, I looked it up. I even gave that a four two five. I was gonna say. So if I'm giving that a high score like that, a sour, then the thing with this though is that high ABV mm -hmm. kind I of think makes that, me really want to like that. Probably boost paid, it. That played that played into my factor. I can sure. I can say they're even. So we'll go ahead. I'll, I'll I'll retract that. This can be a five as well. Um, inclusion of the red current. It, it it's got a very like. I mean, you taste it. You want to like immediately pucker up, but it's like you're having a, a some sort of imported sour candy. Like, uh, of course, we have them here, Sour Patch Kids. But like, Haribo has their their traditional line that comes from Germany, and they include currant as one of their flavors. But they've also got a sour line. This tastes like the the currant sour gummy bear, and mm. uh, one of my favorite candies in the whole wide world. So. Uh, yeah, I, I'm happy with it. This is not the best sour I've ever had, but it is up there. Tied, I guess. Tied? Really? I mean, you don't got to give them that much credit. We can, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's good it's beer. Delicious. It's definitely good beer. There's no doubt about it. Vassin Brewing Company out there in Richmond. Give them a try if you head to the capital. I mean, there's there's just there's no reason not to, man. There's a lot of great breweries in Richmond. You can definitely make a day of it, which is what I did. Without question. I don't know what we're doing next week, but it'll involve drinking on the radio, which sounds my favorite like, hobby. Sounds like fun to me. We'll take a quick break. We'll get back with the tunes right here on 105.3 The Bear. Stick around. <laughs> 